Um, censorship. No, I haven't spelt a word wrong here. I'm intentionally trying to make a point with this title of the video. And uh, I'm going to talk about some personal experiences that have formed my, my views on this during my life. Um, once, many years ago in the mid-90s, I was in a car in Mexico City going to work with other legionaries of Christ. Um, and many of you, when you hear this, you'll understand where I'm going with this a little bit. And why we were in the car, many oftentimes when we we're going to work, we'd listen to this comedy sketch or something that was on the radio. I, I don't even remember, but there was this comedy sketch and we'd tune into this comedy when we were going from, from the school, um, from the Seca Secondary School in, in Mexico City. We lived in the south, in uh, Pedregal. And um, one day the news came on and it mentioned a news conference that happened in Mexico City where some ex legions of Christ had made accusations against Father Marcial. Um, I vividly remember that day because as soon as this news started to be reported, the person driving the car turned the radio off. Um, because what had happened was when this news became public, I mean, this is widely known now. I mean, uh, some journalists in, in, in the States had, had started to publish articles on this. When this started to be published, we were all fed a narrative. We were all brought into uh, uh, as groups and told about what was happening and given a narrative to defend. And this was the narrative that we were supposed to use with laity and so forth and with the members of the Regno Christi. We were given a story and we were saying, look, this is the story here. And yes, Father Marcial has accusations against him, but they've been investigated many years ago and he's been cleared and there's nothing to see here. You don't need to worry about this. Just ignore all of this noise. And um, this is the narrative you need to follow. This was in the mid 90s. OK. Um, and there's been books and books and documentaries all done about this. But I actually lived through it. So, you know, it, 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 it's impacted me a lot during my life because, you know, you're part of that organization. Um, and it's really, you know, it's something I've reflected on so much. You know, how could this man have have done done all of this have have conned so many people for so many years um but he did uh, the legionaries of christ were so big in the mid 90s especially towards the the end of the night they were so big it was near they were nearly unquestionable it was nearly impossible to question their the founder father marcial nuestro padre as we used to call him our father nuestro padre it was nearly impossible. They were so big, it was nearly impossible. Like we'd be in Rome, we'd go to St. Peter's, say if the Pope was having an Urbi at Orbi, you know, the, where he would, uh, after, at Easter or Christmas, and we'd be there with kids from the schools around the world. We'd be there in the plazas of St. Peter, and Father Mar and, and the Pope would say, Se ve, se siente, los legionarios están presente. I can see, I can hear that the legionaries are present. All children of Father Marcial, blah, blah, blah. The Pope, you know, used to lavish praise on the legionaries. He would meet with Father Marcial all the time. And, uh, you know, that was just what, 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 was, what was there and what was happening. Um, I mean, to give you an idea, I mean, it, the legionaries were three times the size of the traditional movement. You know, at at that period, you know, the traditional movement that we have today, which is the fastest growing movement in the church at the moment, the legionaries were that movement in the nineteen nineties. They were enormous. Um, four seminaries in Rome, uh, one of the largest seminaries ever built in Rome. I mean, it was they were too big to fail, and it was all built on a lie. It was all completely built on a lie. I mean, if. And it was, and ironically, ironically, the lie was all there. I mean, it was just that nobody connected the dots. We were, you know, it wasn't like we didn't know. We knew, we knew about uh, that he'd been fired, expelled from various seminaries. They told us that. 
we knew, for example, that once a confessor tried to murder him with a knife in the 1940s, uh, we can, and I understand, we can understand now why he went after him. And Father Maciel used to talk about it. Oh, once a priest tried to kill me with a knife. Uh, and this priest was the confessor in the early ta- era, in the early era of the legion because Father Marcel founded the legion before he was even ordained a priest. So they had external confessors for the minor seminary, and and I believe it was this con- external confessor to try to try to kill Father Marcel, um, or attack him with a knife. This you know this is this is tr- all true. Um, I mean. You, in the church, the seal of confession is, uh, you cannot break the seal of confession, but I think this priest must have uh, been so incensed by what he was hearing confession that he, he went after Father Marcel. Um, I, I mean, it's ironic. We, we A lot of these stories were floating around and were being, you know, manipulated and a narrative was created and so forth. Um, but that's the reality. As a massive organisation as it were, we believed on mass what we were, we were being fed and we didn't question it and those that did question you know what happened to them they got blacklisted censored removed expelled you know you never heard about them again anyone who 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 questioned what was going on they were out you know anyone who criticized a superior or criticized father marcel they were out we had vo- vows that didn't allow us to criticize our superiors, which, you know, horrific thing that, you know, all of this was, was, was obviously removed afterwards. Um, so you were fed this narrative that the Vatican had investigated it, that the, that it, they had found nothing, nothing, that there was nothing to see. It was, you know, it was all above board. Um, and where I'm going with this is, you know, I've reflected on censorship. I've reflected on, um, you know, when information is, is, is controlled, I've reflected on how narratives are managed. You know, I've always educated my, my children to think critically, to think for yourself, to ask questions, to do your investigation and so forth. And what I'm seeing in the last two years, quite honestly, frightens the living daylights out of me. It frightens the living daylight out of me what I'm seeing in the world in the last two years. It's like looking at something that has been, you know, I saw, experienced over 25 years ago and saying, what are we doing? You know, have we learned nothing as a world? You know, this type of corruption, it's not just in the legions, it exists in other areas. You know, there's this lady, uh, I was just reading about her the other day, she invented this company, she had billions, and it was uh, doing blood testing, and she had this wonderful machine that did all these blood tests and so forth, and... uh, it was like uh, she was getting millions and millions of investment. It was all fake. All faked. You know, she's up in court now for defrauding investors. Uh, I mean, that's just one company you have. You have so many of these different companies now that have been built on a completely fake prom- uh, premise. And you wonder why, you know, I, I mean, I've experienced it with the Legions of Christ. We, you know, the, we, active censorship. You know, we were told to believe a narrative. Don't question the narrative. Um, and, you know, there's things here I'd like to s- discuss more, but sadly, our c- the community guidelines of this platform don't allow me to venture into various areas. So I'm just talking here about my own experience in the Legions of Christ 25 years ago when it comes to how information is controlled and manipulated by very large and powerful people and organisations. Father Marcial was one of the most influential and powerful people in the Catholic Church. There is no doubt about it. You know, one of the largest organizations in the Catholic Church, uh, certainly the largest seminary in Rome, the largest religious community in Rome uh, for many years. And yet he was able to build that up up all based on a lie, uh, simply as, you know. And... uh, what was the motivation for his lie? What what was his, what, what were his motivations? Well, money was a big was a big aspect in his life. You know, he was able to live a very luxurious life in the Legion. You know, quite openly, actually, very strangely, and nobody questioned it. You know, he'd have his his nice car, his luxury car. He'd have a different apartment in every legionary legionary house. Like we would never have the luxuries that he had. 
and we also and, and the narrative was given oh he's our founder and we have to we have to look after him and it's a sign of respect for him that he needs this that he needs that that he you know it's quite bizarre and when you look back at it i think how was i so bloody gullible to have believed all of that and it can shake people's faith um and it certainly did mine um but i think you know i think god placed me there to learn a lesson and to talk and to, so that we we don't you know fall into these uh, same potholes again you know because we need to question you need to question when something when a narrative is is defended so strongly with such force with such censorship when something is is um defended in such a way because it's pre- that narrative has behind it a lot of interests that are vested interests, money and so forth. When that narrative uh, is built on uh, some very in- strong interests, then you have to ask questions. We have to ask questions. You know, we should ask questions. Every time Father Marcel used to leave Rome, he'd have 10,000 in cash. <laughs> you know, nobody asked well why why would you need ten thousand why in cash you know and he used to have his he used to have uh, he was very good at he used to control the way some people knew this and other people knew that not everybody knew everything you know uh, this guy was a master of deception um but we should have been asking questions people should be asking questions always ask question i mean there's no such thing as a stupid question better to look stupid and have asked the question than to remain silent and then thinking, not understanding what's going on. Ask questions. Always ask questions. You know, many a few years ago, my son broke his leg on the, on the trampoline. We went into ha- into hospital. They did the X rays and all of this, and the doctor came to us. No, he doesn't have. There's nothing there. He's, he doesn't have a broken leg or anything like that. My wife said to the doctor, "But he's crying and he can't walk. There's something wrong with him." And the expert said, "No, no, he's okay." And my wife said, "Well, I want a second opinion." And the doctor kind of went off annoyed. He said, well, look, if you don't believe me, that's fine. We'll, we, we had to wait four or five hours for another doctor to come along, take the x-ray and said, well, sorry, do you know what? He made a, he, he got it wrong. Your son does have a broken leg. And my wife says, hello, sure, I told you that five hours ago. Why didn't you listen to me? Ask questions, challenge the experts, challenge the narrative, challenge what's going on in the church, you know? challenge how for example we went from an indult to receive communion on the hand to universally practically receiving communion on the hand and why 70 percent of people don't believe in the eucharist anymore you know challenge why you know why you know who do you think is winning in these battles in the church and so forth who is winning today if we've destroyed faith in the real presence of the Eucharist, who do you think instigated this and who do you think is behind this? It is, you know, it's, it's, uh, you know, has no, are you, Catholics need to put two and two together and understand that your faith, your church is being destroyed by certain individuals who do not want the, the faith to, to survive, that have other interests at heart. You know, um, and, you know, I'd like to talk more about this, but I'm just saying, you know, I, I, I believed narrative for many years. I was part of that narrative. We were fed a narrative and we all believed it. And we all told lay people that were involved with the Legionaries of Christ. We all talk, told the, uh, the people that funded the Legion, you know, and they believed us. And, and a lot of lay people, they went on to defend Father Marcel like he could do no wrong. They defended him for years and years and years. And yet, we know now it was complete and utter lie. It was bullshit what, what, was, what was being fed to us. The whole narrative was... I mean, Father Marcial most probably killed, murdered his great uncle, Saint Raphael Guizar Valencia. A saint, a canonized saint. There's a canonized saint in the church today a very holy man was probably murdered by Father Marcial because the both of them argued uh, just before um, Bishop Raphael died. 
uh, probably because uh, he knew what was going on. You know, mo the, the, I wouldn't put anything past Father Martial. He was the most devious, conniving, manipulative, intelligent, highly intelligent man, but most manipulative person that, that probably have, have we've seen in the church for many years. Um, uh, and I, I think he's such a complex person, it's nearly impossible to know everything. But he created that narrative. He was able to manage that narrative. He was able to control people. And people didn't question. He shouldn't have questioned. We should have, we should have been able to question. When, when, the, when the allegations were made in the 1990s by a large group of men, the church should have taken them seriously. They should have been investigated. There should have been openness about this. But there wasn't. You know, and it's this thing how information is controlled, how, um, I don't know, how when, when you see a narrative so tightly controlled and defended because there was a lot of money behind ensuring that Father Marcel uh, was protected. There was a lot of vested interest, a lot of money there. And it wasn't just the Legion. If you think about it in the Vatican at the time, Cardinal Sedano, and others in the Vatican, you know, they, they were they had been, they were they were controlled by Father Marcial. They were funded by Father Marcial. You know, legionaries would go around giving presents to all these cardinals. Strangely enough, Cardinal Ratzinger was probably one of the only cardinals that didn't really buy into the legionary narrative very much at all. He wasn't comfortable receiving gifts, um, and. Uh, I believe, uh, from what I've learned over the years, uh, Cardinal Ratzinger tried to push for an investigation a lot earlier than, uh, during the John Paul II papacy, but wasn't allowed to. It was blocked by Sudano. So, you know, when a narrative is so strongly defended, I always question, what's, what are the key uh, levers behind this narrative who is hiding behind it who is pulling the strings who has to lose if this narrative falls who falls when this narrative falls ask yourselves these questions we should we shouldn't be afraid of of talking of dialogue of discussing of understanding problems bouncing questions off each other not shutting people down don't anytime you see people being shut down Ask yourself why? Why? For example, today there's a group. There's a group around the world. They actually exist. They're called flat Earth people. They they believe that the world is flat, and they have websites and videos and and discussions, uh, you know, defending their position. Nobody shuts them down. I mean, I don't believe it. I don't follow them. You know, I don't, you know they have a completely different view of things. I don't go and shut them down. Who cares? You know that they believe the world is round or flat. Okay, that's their view, such is life. The reason people don't go after them and shut them down is, well, there's no, there's nobody, there's no, what's the, there's nobody to lose. There's nothing that, you know, what's, what that narrative mean to anybody. But there are other things that, you know, at the moment that are going on in the world that have a lot of money behind them, a lot of money, a lot of vested interests, a lot of people involved. And we're not allowed to talk. We're not allowed to question. Can, can you answer our questions? Can, you know, stand up. There, there's a press conference discussing a certain topic and everybody's on board. And yet we know that there are many people asking questions that are not allowed to ask the questions. They're not allowed a seat at the table to ask questions. Why? What's wrong with this? Why, why are we not allowed to have discussions and questions and uh, you know to understand you know what what's going on here and just ask questions allow a, a, a debate and you're not going to have everybody agreeing like even today in the legionaries of christ ex legionaries there's a lot of division there's a lot of debate but it's it's there and you can have that discussion and you can have that debate and we can talk and we can discuss it's not being shut down you know, any allegation that gets brought up in the Legion today, believe me, it gets, you know, enough press and attention. And, the, and you know, the Legionaries have all these independent investigations and so forth. You know, the, you know they get, the Legion probably gets more scrutiny now than any other organization in the Catholic Church because, you know, people will say, oh, sure. 
what can we expect and so forth so it's it is what it is but i mean okay there's there's discussion there's there's uh, debate and so forth that's healthy that's good having a healthy discussion and debate uh, is always good what we have today in other areas in society is a complete shutdown of debate it's a complete shutdown of discussion and that's dangerous guys that is very dangerous that can lead <sighs> i mean we've seen uh, uh, history is dotted with this you know book burning and so forth when we try to shut down a debate uh, about something uh, you know i always question what is the what is the what are the motives for shutting down that debate who has to gain qui bono ask yourself qui bono who has to gain when something is censored shut down silenced you know who had to gain in the legions of christ to make sure that the conversation about father marcial was completely shut down who was gaining there it was father marcial who benefited from there father marcial you know this guy in the 1990s when these men were making their allegations father marcial in the 1990s was abusing his own children he had a, he had this mistress who had two sons with a previous relationship he was abusing them in the 1990s this wasn't historical this was in the 1990s you know he, he had a child with her he had a, thir- a son with her then he went on and he had a daughter with norma i mean we don't know really what how much more there is there in his life he was abusing children in the 1990s you know this could have this abuse could have ended he was actually i mean if when i think about it you know it would drive you mad but you know had father marcial been removed from office had been imprisoned in the 1990s so much suffering could have been avoided but look we have to learn we have to learn when from this from from this those experiences and people need to think critically you know today's world you know it's it's all about social media and and uh, uh what's that app that they use for 30 seconds um uh i i don't even use uh, the chinese app well anyway there's lots of these social media apps and you're there watching videos sc- uh, streaming and uh, you know and people's minds are, are fried <laughs> you're not even to think you know okay okay guys what's going on here what's going on and we need to think critically especially you know what's going on in the world today it is unreal that so such a small group of people in this world have so much power that they can cr- control a narrative there are you know 20 30 people that can control a narrative for millions of people in the world today and what what do they have to benefit from that is you know qui bono from that think about it we all know who is benefiting benefiting from a a certain narrative over the last two years there are people who have become billionaires multi-billionaires because of the situation we have faced over the last two years so there is vested interests in controlling a narrative there always is when when you whenever you see a narrative so tightly and so you know strongly defended and controlled you can be sure that there are so there there is something more to that narrative that needs to be investigated and this is not conspiracy guys here this is just the way it works it's how i saw it how i saw it with father marcial and the legion you know how that narrative was so tightly controlled for so many years because there was a lot to lose for Father Marcel if that narrative came down. And uh, the same today. There's a lot to lose if the narrative that we've been fed for the last two years isn't 100% what it it's claims, claims to be. Um, so, you know, I'm just here to educate people. Please think for yourselves. I'm not getting... In, you know into specifics here about things i'm just saying you should be able to ask questions people should be able to openly ask questions you know when there is discussion when people are arguing with them you know when one side is saying one thing and the other side is saying another thing when people are, are asking questions 
There should be a discussion, an open discussion. You should be able to see facts, reports. You should be able to see, um, you know, you should be able to see a complete chain of information so that you can make and decide for yourselves and to get to the truth. When you're not allowed to see this, when you're not allowed to have a debate, when you're not allowed to listen to debates, when you're not allowed to hear a, a, a dialogue of ideas, when you're told that this narrative is the only narrative and only trust this narrative and there's no other narrative, when you're being told that and there are people making lots of money behind the scenes from that, you can be sure that there's something extremely wrong with what you're being fed. When... If that narrative fell, there were there's going to be lives destroyed, uh, you know, positions destroyed, people will fall, you know. So, I'm just drawing from my own experience here. I've seen it, I've experienced it, I've reflected on it. You know, this um, censorship was what I call it, because it's a what's been covered <laughs> censored is the sin, <laughs> censorship. Uh, you know, it's a real thing. And it's evil. It's pure evil. Think for yourselves. Ask questions. Investigate. Dialogue with people. You know, it's 2022. We should be able to have conversations in 2022. We should be able to, you know, uh, have a back and forth of ideas and conversations. On basic things, for, you know, I think everybody gets the gist of what I'm talking about here. It, you know, we we should have been able to have a conversation 25 years ago when those men stood up and made allegations. There should have been a conversation in place, and there wasn't. It was a narrative we were given. Conversations shut down. No investigation, and that narrative was defended to the hilt and money was put against it and lawsuits and all of this thing because that narrative was uh, had to be maintained because if it fell you know there was too much at stake uh, so anyway just some thoughts this sunday evening reflections please you know i say and i say this in the church what's going on in the church today people think for yourselves you know from the spiritual point of view what you know Look around your church today. Why has the faith been destroyed in the last 50 years? You know, why ha has the Eucharist been destroyed in the last 50 years? From an indult, I mean, how, as we give out communion today in, in, our, in, in our church, was never discussed in Vatican II, so we're not going to even go there. It was an indult, it was a, it was a permission, and look what we've done. We've completely destroyed the faith in the Eucharist, what we've done. Question. Who has to gain? Qui bono from destroying the faith? You know, who has to gain? We all know who has to gain from destroying the church. From destroying, uh, cutting off access to heaven. You know, the church is here to bring souls to heaven. And if we destroy the faith in the Eucharist sacraments, you know, who has to gain? Think about it. Uh, and, uh, you know, I just think there's a lot, there's a lot we can learn and uh, I think we should be learning from this, um, from what has happened over the last few years. Anyway, God bless. Take care. Bye. -bye.